Greetings, thank you for joining and watching this Red Hen Systems demonstration and overview of Media Geotagger. Media Geotagger is a post processing software tool that will automatically geotag your media, whether they are digital photos, videos, and or audio clips. The geotagging process requires that GPS data was collected at the same time the media was obtained. At a minimum, your GPS log point data will need latitude, longitude, and UTC. Without this information, you will not be able to geotag your media. To access the Media Geotagger manual, which has more detailed information, select the link in the bottom left of the main form, then select the Media Geotagger user guide link. A PDF of the user guide will now open. Since this is our first time using Media Geotagger, we will create a new project. Your project consists of a media collection containing both media and GPS logs. To help with keeping our content organized, we will need to provide some general information regarding our captured media and where to store our final geotagged media. I will go with the default information provided. I will now provide Media Geotiger with the track log of our patrol. Media Geotiger will accept either GPX, NMEA, or the Red Hen System standard XML file type. If a Garmin GPS logger is used, I can connect the device to my PC, select to not enter mass storage mode on the Garmin's prompt, and transfer the track log to Media Geotiger with the first available option. Please install the necessary Garmin drivers before you start Media Geotiger if you decide to use the GPS receiver option. The second option of scanning a folder for a GPS log is useful if multiple track logs were generated. I have only one track log. I will select the third option. Please note that it is best to have your GPS track log encompass a larger time frame than your media. This will maximize the amount of media you will be able to geotag. For example, if a video I want to geotag is 30 seconds long, but my track is only 25 seconds long, I will not be able to geotag the video. Always have enough of a buffer to allow Media Geotagger to work with your media. A 30 second long video should have an accompanying GPS track log longer than 30 seconds. This is our first time using Media Geotagger, so we won't have any existing devices to select from. Let's add some devices. The camera I used was a GoPro Hero 3. It can capture photos and video. We are asked if this camera uses start time. I'm going to leave this as I don't know. Now, not all video recorders represent a video file's creation time the same way. When a file is created, it is typically designated with a creation date and time by the camera's internal clock. Now, video files span across a length of time. Does the creation date and time represent the beginning of the recording or the end of the recording? Not all manufacturers are the same way in how they represent their video files creation time. These next steps will help Media Geotagger find the answer. We will record a 20 second long video, stop the recording for 5 seconds, and then record a 5 second long video. Follow along with the prompts. I have already created these video files and will be selecting skip. I will now browse for the original 20 second and 5 second long videos I created. It was a success. Here's a graph to illustrate what occurred. If my video camera represents the video file's creation time as the start of the recording, the difference in creation times for the two videos will be about 25 seconds. However, if my video camera represents the video file's creation time as the end of the recording, the difference in creation times for the two videos will be about 10 seconds. Media Geotiger will prompt us on whether or not it has discovered how the camera represents the creation time. As you can see, it was successful. Our camera settings will be saved in Media Geotiger and we can continue. Your saved devices will be stored under your local drive, program data, Red Hen systems, devices.xml. If you are using a new PC with Media Geotagger, you can copy this file to the same folder on your new PC. Media Geotagger will now have your old devices loaded and ready to use. You will not need to set up your devices again. This next step requires Media Geotagger to know the time offset between your media files and the GPS points in your track log. If our camera's clock was set approximately to UTC, we can select the second to last option, device's clock was set to UTC, meaning that the time offset is close to zero. Here's a graph to illustrate. 
If our camera's clock was not set to UTC, we will need to find the time offset, or the time difference between the camera's internal clock and UTC. Here's a graph to illustrate. If we already have media which describes the current UTC, we can select calibration media was already captured by the device. Or we can capture some media with our device so that we will have the UTC by selecting the option capture image of an accurate clock display in UTC time, or selecting the option use local network or internet time server, or selecting the option use a connected GPS unit. Captured media can either be a photo, video, or audio recording with the UTC visible or mentioned in it. If we don't have the recording device but can estimate the location of our media on a map using visible landmarks in the media and the GPS track, we can select the last option, manually set a media point on the GPS track. If Media Geotagger can't find a GPS point in the earlier provided track log using the calculated time offset, your media will not be geotagged. Here's a graph to illustrate. My media already has a view of the UTC. I will select Calibration Media was already captured by the device. I will now browse to my original uncopied calibration media file which displays the UTC. This media file will typically be on the recorder or was cut and pasted to your local PC, not copied. The displayed time and date will need to be entered into the fields below. The time is 23 hours, 21 minutes, 2 seconds. The date is November 3rd, 2013. The next step involves telling Media Geotagger the location of my media files that I want to geotag. Again, just like the calibration media, these media files will typically be on the camera recorder or were cut and pasted to your local PC, not copied. To save time, I will uncheck the option Copy Original Media. The last step before Media Geotagger begins processing the media will require the user to specify an acceptable amount of error during the geotagging procedure. I will go with the default options. Media Geotagger will begin geotagging our media. I am only geotagging one video file, which is also the calibration media. After processing the media, Media Geotagger will provide a summary of its work. It will provide a tally of media files that were geotagged and media files that were not geotagged. Let's view our geotagged media in ISWARE to check its validity. If you recall, when we set up our project, our Media Geotagger folder location was set to here. In Isware, I'll add the media from the Media Geotagger folder location. When I start playing the video, you can see a cursor appear on our track. Skipping ahead in the track demonstrates that our media is synchronized with our cursor.
If you have further questions regarding Moody Geotagger, a user guide is available on the main Red Hen Systems website at www.redhensystems.com. Move your mouse over Support and select Manuals. The Moody Geotagger manual will be available under the category Software. And this concludes our Red Hen Systems overview of Moody Geotagger. Again, thank you for watching and choosing Red Hen Systems.